today is going to be a day in my life with multiple sclerosis, specifically how I handle energy dips. My energy over the last week has been at an all-time low. Last week I had incredible energy, I was feeling super energized and just feeling really good, but this week I'm experiencing a little bit of a dip because of chronic fatigue and I think because of just where I am in my cycle and I'm honestly not feeling 100% good and so I thought it would be interesting to do a video on one of these days to just show you how I handle my energy dips. Typically something like this would make me feel a little bit down but luckily I have a lot of practices and tools in place to help me cope with these energy dips and just allow myself to live in a way that I can just ride the cycles and understand that these things happen and it's also okay. So much as I would love to stay home today I actually have to go and take this surfboard in to get fixed. So I'm gonna run some errands this morning and then I'm gonna come back, do some work and just show you how I handle a typical chronic fatigue kind of day. I have this beautiful surfboard which I am actually taking in today to get fixed. <laughs> so let's go do that. I just got home I had such a wonderful time at the beach I literally didn't want to leave so I dropped my surfboard off and it's getting fixed and I'm going to go and pick it up in a week's time and then I just did not want to leave the ocean it has been so cold and so rainy in Cape Town which I think has also kind of like induced my chronic fatigue and why I've had such bad kind of like exhaustion lately so yeah the weather has just not been great and i have not seen the sun in over like two weeks and so having a beautiful sunny day and being able to go to the ocean was just what my soul needed so i got myself a matcha which i absolutely love matchas i don't drink any coffee matcha is my absolute favorite thing to drink especially when i'm feeling a bit tired i wouldn't overdo like the caffeine or green tea or matcha if you're super super Super, super exhausted and think that that is going to combat the exhaustion because then you just basically get like a fake energy rush and you're not really treating the actual reasons why you're exhausted and so it's not to combat the exhaustion at the same time I also just absolutely love matcha I know it's gonna make me feel super good and without the crash of caffeine so I just get it and indulge in it from time to time. So I had a matcha, I spent some time in the sun which I really really needed. I highly recommend if you have chronic fatigue to get outside in the sun. Like I said it's been so overcast I haven't seen the sun and so if you're in a place where you actually just don't have any sun then go into a sauna or do some light therapy. I haven't done either of those things so that's why seeing the sun today just made me feel so much better and I'm honestly feeling so rejuvenated I definitely needed it so I'm going to get out the car now and I'm going to make myself some lunch I'm absolutely hungry before I get out of the car and make myself some lunch I also just wanted to share such a clever little hack that I have for having chronic fatigue or an autoimmune disease and that is to always bring snacks with you wherever you go so something that I've been loving doing is I packed some steak in a Tupperware and I ate that and the protein is just so good for you and it makes me feel so much better so definitely have 
a lot of high protein snacks, it's going to make the world of difference in your overall health and well-being. So now let's go inside, get some lunch and I'm also going to make my favorite anti-inflammatory tea. So I quickly ate some lunch, I meal prepped some rice and veggies, it wasn't that interesting, I was just so hungry I didn't even get a chance to film it. Now I'm going to make my anti-inflammatory tea. I've shared the recipe in another video, but this is really great for if you have an autoimmune disease and you struggle with brain fog or chronic fatigue. The anti-inflammatory bulletproof tea with coconut oil is just such a great way to get some healthy fats. And then there's just a lot of anti-inflammatory properties from the turmeric with a crack of black pepper because if you're ever going to be having turmeric, you need to add black pepper because that helps with absorption. <music> my beautiful anti-inflammatory tea which I am super excited to drink and I just wanted to share a little bit about chronic fatigue and having an autoimmune disease whatever autoimmune disease you have so I have multiple sclerosis I'm on ocrevus infusions every six months but you might have a completely different autoimmune disease so whatever is going on with you I just wanted to still have a little chat about living with chronic fatigue and living with an autoimmune disease and how that feels. But you might also experience chronic fatigue and not actually have an autoimmune disease. Regardless, this message is for you. What I have come to know living with MS and having experienced a lot of chronic fatigue over the years, even though it is considerably better now that I am on the Ocrevus infusions. But what I wanted to actually share is all about cyclical living. So in my last video, I spoke about an introduction to cyclical living and how the seasons of nature mirror what's going on within us. And so we too have inner seasons. And in that specific video, it was directly connected to the menstrual cycle. But in this specific video, I'm just going to be speaking about it to all people, regardless of whether you have a menstrual cycle or not. So the reason why I love cyclical living so much is that it teaches you to honor the ebbs and flows of your energy. Our energy fluctuations and even mood fluctuations don't actually have to be a necessarily bad things, but we experience these things in seasons of life. And so a season of your life can last a week, it can last a day, it can last a couple of months, but typically, but typically we're going to feel different things every single day. So when you have chronic fatigue and you are experiencing an autoimmune disease, you might feel really upset when you experience chronic fatigue and feel like you're never going to get better. But what I've really learned is understanding that it's okay to just be experiencing a season of your life where that is just what's happening. But it doesn't mean that you're going to always be like that. Seasons flow, seasons ebb and change, and so you can experience this, but it doesn't mean that that is your reality forever and ever and ever. And so what and so this has really helped me today and other times when I experience chronic fatigue because I know that it's not always going to be how I feel every single day. So for the most part, even though I'm feeling this way right now, I know that I'm not going to feel like this forever. And this kind of mindset, seeing it as a season, seeing it as an ebb and flow in my energy levels, understanding that it's not going to be that way forever, and this is just the season I'm in right now at this very moment, helps me not get too existential about having an autoimmune disease or about having chronic fatigue or experiencing any of the symptoms that show up when you live with an autoimmune disease. I like to not get too existential about it and just understand that this might be what I'm feeling right now, but I'm not always gonna feel like this. So how can I support myself best right now, knowing that this doesn't have to be my every single day? And so when you're experiencing chronic fatigue, it's also important to, what I like to do is just romanticize my life 
in that way and so i understand that romanticizing your life is not always going to be easy you're not always going to feel like romanticizing your life especially when you're having a lot of symptoms come up however the reality is that you're experiencing those symptoms so how can we make the best of it when it's happening so romanticizing my life when i'm having an autoimmune flare-up or having a really bad case of chronic fatigue is to make myself a really nice cozy cup of tea, light a candle, watch a movie, light some incense, read a book, have a really delicious slow yin yoga practice, make myself an incredibly delicious Epsom salt bath, Things like that really help me just romanticize my life and how I'm feeling. I love to curl up on my bed and do some yoga nidra. I love to do lots of meditations and I just really embrace where I'm at right now and find like the beauty in that specific stage of my life. When you have a lot of energy, you're not gonna feel like staying indoors and being really slow, you're gonna want to go outside and experience life and just enjoy it. Just remember that there will be a time where you have a lot of energy again. And in the times when you don't, just try find ways that you can romanticize your life for exactly what it is instead of wishing that you were another person or you were in a different stage than what you're currently in. Because the truth is that we can't change where we're at, but we can change the way we relate to where we're at with the things that we do. And since I'm experiencing a lot of chronic fatigue right now, I want to make the most of it and actually just enjoy being slow, taking it easy, not going to the gym, doing a slow yin yoga practice, drinking some tea, reading a book, being a bit more introverted and just embracing where I'm at right now because I know that it's gonna shift and change. And to be honest, it does always shift and change. Last week, I had so much energy and I was so busy having so much fun, hanging out with my friends, going out and really just enjoying my life. Whereas this week, I know that I need time to be alone and recharge my energy. And I think that that is super normal and super natural. So like I said, just embrace wherever you are right now, instead of wanting to change your current reality, find ways to romanticize exactly where you are. Even if where you are isn't the easiest, are there ways that you can bring joy, love, pleasure into that moment, even if it's not where you want to be? I am feeling super lazy, so I am going to just relax and read my book for a little bit. I'm teaching yoga later. I wish that I wasn't, but I am. So I have to just kind of rile myself up for that. And I'm sure I'll make it through the class, no problem. And if I do get tired, I'll just prompt my students into poses and watch them. Um, before I get started on teaching, I'm going to read a little book just to relax myself. And then I'm gonna go for a really, really slow walk just to warm my body up before I teach yoga. Like I said, it's been really cold here in Cape Town and I don't wanna injure myself. So it's always good to have like a nice little walk. I also find that that also helps elevate my mood. We all know that exercise elevates our mood, but when we're having a lot of chronic fatigue symptoms, we obviously don't always feel like exercising or working out. So a really slow walk can really do wonders as well as a really relaxing yoga practice, some yin yoga, things that are more calm based, really help when you're experiencing chronic fatigue because I know that you won't have the energy to do crazy, crazy exercises. finished teaching yoga it went really well and now I'm probably going to have a bath so that I can just relax for the rest of the evening the bath is running right now and I'm gonna have like a really wholesome evening I want to do some reading I want to do journaling and I just want to feel super super good um, and I'm feeling 
like I'm in the mood for like a really really cozy night. So it is currently the next day. Last night after I taught yoga, ate dinner and had my bath, I was so exhausted and I actually just got into bed and read a little bit and then fell asleep. So that's kind of just the reality of living with chronic fatigue. Sometimes you'll start a project like I did with this vlog with the intention of filming, but then you get really, really exhausted and then you can't continue. And so I was gentle with myself and I just went to bed and decided to pick the vlog up in the morning. So we are currently in the morning of the next day and I'm still feeling pretty tired. It is quite overcast today and I'm really sad because I was enjoying the sun so much yesterday and I can really see how much the sun helps my energy. But I'm not going to get too down about that. I'm going to do a little bit of a very gentle flow. Then I'm going to make myself some St. John's Wort. If you are familiar with St. John's Wort, it is the most incredible herb and I love having it in a tea. It has amazing benefits and if you've ever seen the plants, it is a beautiful yellow flower and it is said to symbolize the sun and so when you are in need of the sun, internally you can drink the plants and connect to that inner light that you have within you. It also boosts your mood and your energy levels and has been known to help people with mild depression. So. I definitely feel like I need something to boost my energy and also to boost my overall mood. So when you have chronic fatigue, don't push yourself to do things that you can't do. Instead, nurture yourself and that's exactly what I'm about to do with this very relaxing flow. I highly recommend you doing some yin yoga or yoga nidra or even just a gentle restorative yoga practice just so that you can move your body and release some endorphins without really putting your body under any kind of stress that a really hectic workout would do. It is pouring with rain and it is so cold here. I have a fire going. I've just been taking it really easy for the rest of the day. I did that yoga practice. I've just been reading, drinking lots of tea, watching some Game of Thrones. I'm having a very slow and a very wholesome day and just kind of nurturing myself and also just tending to my inner fire as winter comes in full force. I'm just really looking after myself. This evening I have a beautiful call with Madeline Moon, who is an incredible person on Instagram and I'm joining her Theatre of Love three-day event. So it's happening tonight, tomorrow night and the evening after. So. I absolutely love all the woo-woo, witchy, feminine magic and I'm just so excited to really dive into it tonight. I'm going to light a candle, pull some oracle cards and just really tune in to the energy so that I can be in presence for 
the workshop this evening. Yes, I'm just so excited to have a wonderful, wholesome night learning from an incredible woman like Madeline. I have a nice little space set up all in front of the fire, <laughs> so I'm going to be super warm. Make myself a cup of tea before the class properly starts. Just get nice and cozy. I'm so excited. There is absolutely nothing that makes me happier than having a warm cup of tea, especially in the winter time and especially when I'm going through my energy dips. I don't know, there's something about it that just makes you feel like you can truly relax. The warmth in your hands, sitting down and drinking it, especially by the fire, you just feel so cozy. And I know that a lot of people are going into summer now, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. And so even if you're going into summer, you can do the same with like an iced tea, making your iced tea, reading a book, all of these things you can do to just adjust to wherever you are in your lifestyle. Like I said, the most important thing is to just be romanticizing where you are in your life. Instead of wishing that things were different, just embrace where you are and find what you can do to make all of those moments pleasurable so that you can enjoy your life, even during times when you're not feeling your best. that amazing circle that we had with Madeline. It was so transformative, really feeling the magnitude of that transmission and it's just resonating so deeply within me. So I'm just taking a couple moments by the fire to just really integrate everything that came up for me during the session and also just taking a few deep breaths just to like calm down and start preparing myself for the evening because I think it's really important if you have chronic fatigue to ensure that you have a really solid evening routine so that you can get a really good night's sleep. Sometimes when we're super exhausted, we can struggle to sleep. And so it's quite important to prioritize that you're doing things that properly calm you down so that you can get in those solid hours of sleep instead of being still kind of wired in the evening. So I'm going to do my evening routine. I'm probably gonna make myself some chamomile tea. My evening routine is really simple. I like to just do things that make me feel calm and not too stimulated. I don't really like scrolling my phone a lot in the evenings. I just wanna have a nice, calm and relaxing night. <laughs> 